Yeah. Um, can you hear me? I can hear you. So I guess I can't do this with the headphone. You wait, you can hear me now? I can hear you, yeah. Okay. Yeah, you can you can do it with the headphones. It's just uh I prefer just the to... headphones, just so I'm not like making all these oh hold on, let me test wait. Say something. Yeah, hello. Yeah, it's the fucking oh, you headphone. Know what? Maybe I'm I an wonder. idiot. Hold on. I wonder. <gasps> I didn't turn up the volume. Are you kidding me? Oh my God. <laughs> Have I been recording this? Yes, I got all of this. Oh my God. Wonderful. I feel like it's such a fucking idiot. <laughs> How come I'm in here as my child? Uh, she probably was the last one to use it. So she probably just changed your name. Interesting. Okay, sorry. I didn't. I don't know how to work anything in my life. <laughs> All right. Well, you kept pointing. I was like trying to read your lips, and I was like, I, I don't know. That's and right. I kept, and I kept telling you that I couldn't hear you, and you kept talking. Yeah, I, I was, I was trying. <laughs> I don't know what I was thinking. There's a chat. We have. To- Cell phone. Clearly, no, clearly. Don't ask me. All right. I don't know what I'm don't doing. Don't ask me because apparently I didn't know there was a volume. Out of control, man. This is a hot mess. You see, this is why we can't. That's good. Have nice That's good. That's why it's funny. This this will this will go uh, in the blooper reel. Oh my God, <laughs> I feel so dumb. You shouldn't feel dumb. It's also like you know, after you just got back from the gym, brain cells ain't working. Plus, you got like what whole tribe of kids seriously and pets oh, and pets see fur babies regular babies and plants it drains the brain you got plants too jesus yeah Who does that i don't know apparently me yeah i don't i don't I, I can barely keep my kids alive and the pets so i don't know if i can keep a plant alive it should be the other way around but I mean, whatever you know i mean don't get me wrong i have some artificial plants and some real plants and I brought some of them back to life. They were really close to death. So for my chilies, oh dude, I my chilies died. I'm so fucking sad. You like like actual like chili peppers? Yeah. Oh man. Ch- have you ever heard of uh, chili tipi? Chili yeah. tipi? Mm-hmm. Yep, I had three of them, and oh. they all died. Damn. Mm-hmm. Can you make me drink water? What? Actually, you know what? I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna get some water. Actually, yeah, I, you know I'm really bad at taking hot showers, and so when I get out, I'm like extremely dehydrated, and I have to drink tons of water after I get out the shower, and it's probably not a good idea because then I end up waking up all night having to go pee. Oh shit, my thing's not. Oh man, hold on. Ow. You said you, you have a problem taking hot showers? Oh, uh, hold on. I mean, I'm, I'm really bad at like, like when, when I take a shower, it's really hot. Yeah, that's me. Yeah. And so it's almost like a sauna. So like I end up dehydrating myself and I get out the shower and I have to drink like a shit ton of water, which is a bad idea at night. Because then I end up waking up multiple times a night to go to the bathroom. I know that you're not a dri- uh, like a, dri- a beer drinker, but there's actually um, a really euphoric feeling um, if you take a hot, hot, hot shower and you take a super cold. It has to be a beer because it has to be alcoholic and and uh, is a specific word for it. I forgot what it's called. But you crack open a beer and you like you know drink it while you're in the hot shower and the the rush. In your body is a very specific feeling. It's pretty dope. I never thought to put two and two together. I read that somewhere and I was like, yeah, I'm gonna try that. And it did. Interesting. Does it have the same effect when you're like in a jacuzzi? Yep. Yes, it does. You know, I, I used to love the thought of a jacuzzi when I was a child. And then when I became a grown woman, all I think about is 
infections and UTIs. <laughs> no, it just ruined it for me. And I can't, I can't, you know, do a jacuzzi. Well, if they're, if they're cleaned properly, then that shouldn't happen. But if they're, it, it just depends on the jacuzzi. If it's, that's and true. The temperature, I, it I has went to be to, the right temperature. I went to a ghetto ass apartment complex and had a jacuzzi and I just had a horrible experience and I will never, I will never yeah. go on a jacuzzi it, again. And um, also too, like, if, like, let's say you go to like, like Vegas and they have like, you know, jacuzzi parties and the bars and jacuzzi, they keep the temperature at a specific, like it's warm, but it's not hot. And so it doesn't actually reach the point where it kills bacteria. And so that's how that ends up happening. But they, they do that on purpose because it it keeps you, they don't want people getting too dehydrated when they're drinking like that and passing out in the in the freaking water. And so like, <laughs> that's what ends up causing disease. So it's like one way or another, you're screwed. Whereas like, you know, on a, on a boat or something, or like you have your own hot tub, put that shit hot and you're fine. It's really, it's weird. Like I was like, oh yeah. It's just weird. It's almost like, it's like, when you sit in a jacuzzi, you're almost like in a pot of boiling water. You're just you're cooking humans. I don't, it's weird. It's weird. It, I mean, actually, I yeah, know. you're slight. You're just slightly cooking. What That's you know? What's great. it's weird. Yeah. <laughs> it's weird that like, if you think about it, like, oh my god, like jacuzzis, like it's. I don't even want to go. There. It's fucking gross. <laughs> like all the bacteria. That's so fucking gross. It's hilarious. I never really thought about that. The cooking. Humans, I'm going to stick with my hot showers and just, and stick with that. Well, you see, that's why private, wine. private jacuzzis. That's fun. Like you're in a spa. It's taken care of. It's, it's, there's nobody sitting in there. It's just like, you know, you're getting your little treatment, your little sesh. It's just you and whoever, but like, yeah, you know, it's just like 15, 20 people. It's gross. You know, good. right before I'm like, just sorry, I'm like jumping topic just because oh, yeah. it's on my search history and it reminded me. Um, so I like, I don't know, I've just been feeling kind of weird lately and actually <laughs> lately, meaning like since February and I never really like thought to call my doctor <laughs> instead I just googled and I should have done that because Google clearly clearly I should be dead right now so I'm like, what the fuck I'm just trying to figure out what's wrong with me like I feel like it just takes forever to make an appointment with the VA and it's sad to say because I literally work there and you think that I could just jump hoops and see a doctor whenever I please but I actually it doesn't work that way for me. Like, I, I don't know if this is your experience or not, but like with me, despite the fact that I actually work at the VA, if I call my clinic to make an appointment with my primary care doctor, they have to, they're like, okay, so what are your symptoms? What's going on with you? Yada, yada, yada. And I got to tell them, right? Instead of making me an appointment they say, oh, we're going to send this to the triage nurse and they will call you. Keep in mind, these nurses are in California oh and God. they will call you within 24, 48 hours. And it could, and, and they're 24 seven. So they can literally call you at 11 PM and you'll be asleep. If you miss that call, you can't call them back. You don't, you don't, Oh my God. Oh my God. Hey, <laughs> shut up. That's enough. Did you hear that? Yeah. That's awesome. Good grief. Um, see, you take the dogs out of the ghetto and they still think they're in the ghetto, like settle down. Um, but yeah, so, so like, then, yeah, for real. And then, so they, they sent it to the nurses over there in California and it takes about 24 to 48 hours for them to call you back. I think it's 24 hours, but anyways, and they're 24 seven. And, you know, so sometimes I've had a call like at 11 PM at night, you know, whatever, it, it doesn't matter. 
There's no business hours. They can call you whenever. And if you miss the call, you're fucked because that means that you got to go call your clinic again to be put back in queue. You can't call them back. You can't, um, you know, it's not like you miss a call and then they'll try to call you again. Nah, once you miss it, you're done and they got to, you got to call your um, primary care again and then get back in the queue. All this just to make a fucking appointment. And guess mm-hmm. what happens? Then, then when you make an appointment, well, again, this is, I don't know about your VA, but this is my VA. I haven't even seen my doctor in person ever. Yeah, and I I've ever did apparently, either. yeah, I think it was like virtual. And even still, like he was wearing a mask. Like, I don't even know who the fuck that is. Like, <laughs> I'm serious. It, it could have just been some random stranger that they just put in. Like, I don't even know. So that's why I prefer to Google for all of my medical needs. Yeah. Uh, WebMD will tell you that you died four days ago. <laughs> Seriously. I'm, I'm a corpse. I'm just a walking. Like, oh, I've got pain down. in my stomach. Cancer. Like, what? Seriously, like, no, you know how many, serious. you know how many times I've diagnosed myself with cancer? Like I have like four different types of cancer right now. <laughs> you know what? I'm just going <laughs> to, this is kind of unrelated, but it's related. So I, my, my uncle um, lives around here somewhere. I don't know. He's, he's floating around and he, uh, he leaves me a voice message. This is like day four yesterday. It's the weirdest voice message ever. Like, it's so simple and so just, like, matter of fact. I'm like, what the hell? It's like at 1 o'clock in the morning. I didn't hear the phone call. And he leaves me a voicemail that says, your aunt's dying of cancer. And I'm like, what? It's his sister or whatever. I'm like, what? So my mom calls me up the next day. Like, I was just kind of ignored. I'm like, what the hell is that? Like, I guess I'll, you know, talk to him tomorrow or whatever. Maybe he's drunk. So my mom calls me up. And she's like, hey, I got this weird voicemail from your uncle, my dad's brother. It says, hey, that, uh, that your aunt's dying of cancer. I'm like what i said i don't I, like i don't i hadn't heard her being mm-hmm. sick or whatever like i don't really talk to her because she's kind of crazy but um <laughs> aren't they all <laughs> no she's real crazy like, i mean yeah but like i mean you're right but even her own daughter didn't talk to her so i was like you know i'm going through my head and i'm like trying to figure this out i'm like all right is this a cry for attention like is does she want attention or is my uncle looking for attention and he's just like putting this chick on her deathbed and she's like you know She's like, oh, yeah, maybe I have a tumor. And he's like, oh, you're dying. I, I don't know. Right. So I'm like trying to figure this out, but I haven't heard from anything. So I call one of my cousins up. I'm like, he doesn't know anything. And I'm like, uh, well, if I hear anything, I'll let you know. So the guy calls me up again. I answer. And he tells me that his brother called him and told him that she's got stage two breast cancer and it's terminal. And I'm like, well, stage two doesn't mean terminal. Stage four means terminal. So I was like, I'm not, but I'm not correcting him. I'm just like, oh God, I don't want, I don't want to stay on this phone call. <laughs> but like, then he immediately proceeds to go, hey, and yeah, can you help me out with this VA paperwork? Blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, what? Like, what? so I'm, I'm starting to feel like he heard that she was sick because apparently in the middle of the conversation, when he spoke to her, because after he found out, he called her up, said, how are you doing? And she said that she wasn't, again, he didn't make it perfectly clear but that she had an appointment upcoming, like this week she was going to go and find out so that she didn't really know if she had cancer that she was about to find out. And I'm like, dude, I I don't know if, if Joe wants attention Mm. or if this dude wants attention or if she wants attention, maybe they all freaking want attention, but either way he ends up just kind of segueing into, Hey, can you help me out? And let's do this thing. And he's been calling me nonstop. And I'm like, dude, that's weird. God, they're just, it's one of those things that like, has, have you ever had like a relative like invite you over for something? And then there's like, there's really an ulterior motive that like wants you to help them with something. Like maybe it's like your parents and they're like, oh, you come over to the house and like get the computer or something like, oh, that's what you really wanted me to do. Like you didn't um, call me over for dinner. And so that's what I felt like it was. <laughs> oh, like, it's so weird. Like, yeah, um, she's dying. By the way, can you do this favor for me? Yeah. I'm like, what the f- like, man, what's going you on? Know, well, my dad, he's not, he doesn't do that where he'd like, you know, use that as an excuse to, to get a favor, but he is, um, <laughs> I don't know what the word for it is, but 
I swear to God, there's times where like, cause we have like our own little group chat with my sisters um, and my mom and my dad. Right. And then just like r- randomly, my dad's like, pray for your mom um, because she's very sick right now. And we're like, what the fuck? Like what's going on? Dude, my mom has a cold. Like he does that every time. He's just like, pray for your mom right now. It's not looking too good. And I'm just like, what the hell? What's going on? We're all calling. We're all blowing up the the group chat. And my mom texts us and she's like, I'm fine. Your dad's just so dramatic. It's fine. It's just the flu. And I'm like, what the hell, dad? Like he does that. I swear to God, he does that every time. And so it's like the dad who cried wolf. So like now every time he's like, oh, this is going on. We're just like, okay, dad. Like, (laughs) you know what I mean? Like, my dad's very similar in a sense. Like my dad makes everything sound like it's super dramatic. Like everything uh-huh. is like, I'll give you an example. So he'll be like, Oh, um, if he's going to invite you over, he'll be like, Hey, uh, can we talk? And I'm like, Oh uh, yeah. What do we talk about? He's like, do you want to come over for dinner tomorrow? I'm like, why, why does he sound like, like that? that? Why do you gonna like, make him yeah, sound like, so like like why do you do that? Like, you know, so when somebody says, like, Can you talk? It's like, hey, that sounds what's serious. your favorite scary movie? Yeah, I'm like, what are you doing, bro? <laughs> so can you uh, I'm like that? Like it and you know that's what's his Batman on? voice. That's yeah, that's probably it. He's just trying to freak me out. But like he does it for, for everything. He'd be like, Oh man, uh um uh, can you help me put this thing together? I'm like, why are you saying like that though? Or, oh or, or just randomly say something and he'll be like, oh man, uh, have you seen that new movie? I'm like, dude, I did not, <laughs> I, like your tone did not tell me that that's where that was going. That's so, that's what it is. It's the tone. It's how they say yeah. it. And he also like gets really embarrassed when it comes to like feminine things. Like what? things, yeah. So like my sister, right? My, I'll give you a funny story. We're going to, uh, we're going to California and my sister got a flight after me. And so I'm going to pick her up at the airport. My dad calls me up, right? I'm waiting outside of LAX and I'm driving around. And he calls me up. He says, oh, man, your sister has a problem she doesn't know about. And I'm like, "My what? Like, what's going on? Like, I'm, I'm in my head, like, I'm starting to process a million different things. Hey, she left uh-huh. her credit card. Um, she didn't have any money. Her cell phone's dead. Like, I'm starting to, to go through the list of what can I do to, to you know, fix this? And he's like, ah. Uh, I don't think she has any underwear. I'm like, what? I'm sorry, what? I'm like, what? What do you think of that? And he's like, ah, I'm, I'm here doing the laundry, and I just see the basket, and it's got you know all of her stuff, and I'm just like, ah. and I'm like, what are you talking about, dude? And so like, I'm trying not to laugh, but at the same time, like, he's just freaking out. What? And then, what like, scared him the fact that he had to do her laundry or no i guess like he just saw the laundry like what was happening was my mom was doing the laundry because my mom does my laundry for my sister so mm-hmm. my mom's doing the laundry and then he saw the clothes and just assumed that she didn't pack the right amount of clothes i believe me this doesn't make any sense because it's just a, what are you doing cat <laughs> what the cat's on the keyboard oh oh my god the one time I minimized the video. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so I'm talking to him on the phone and I'm, he's like freaking out. And he's like, oh, what are you going to do? And I was like, what do you mean? What am I going to do? I said, look, if she doesn't have underwear, just go to the store and get underwear. And he's like, oh, like he's getting so embarrassed about this. Like, like it's, it's you know, like I'm like, dude, it's not that serious. Like she's my sister. It's i mean it's not a big deal like I'll, mm-hmm. I'll talk to her and he's like oh you can't you can't talk to her about that that's embarrassing i was like what are you talking about like why i mean it could have just it could have just been like you know because we talk about like the latino dads like well really latino parents because they're like a totally different generation oh, like yeah. my dad <laughs> let me tell you when it came to the sex talk oh, like my god that was the most awkward thing i've ever experienced like I think I honestly have blocked it out of my memory, but I knew it was something along the lines of if I look at a boy, I'll get pregnant. Like if I kiss a boy, if I date a boy, if I breathe the same air as a boy, I will get pregnant and he will leave me. But I honestly feel like he manifested that because literally all of my sisters and I got abandoned. (laughs) Like we got knocked up and left like, well, okay. So 
he, I feel like the only reason why he was right was because he manifested that shit. Like he was just so negative about it. Like it was nothing beautiful about lovemaking or finding someone you love or intimacy. It was like taboo, forbidden, you know, like if a guy, if you sleep with somebody, like you get pregnant, he'll leave you. Like if that's, that was it. That was like the ultimate no, no. You know what I mean? Like it, it wasn't even about STDs, right? It wasn't even about like anything other than he'll get pregnant, he'll leave you. And sure well, shit. And you know, it, it's, <laughs> it's really interesting because especially like coming from like Latin and, um, and like just Hispanic backgrounds, it's culturally there's that, you know, that machismo, you know, like there's there's that sense that like when it comes to girls, no sex, no, absolutely not. No, I don't even look at a boy like I'll, I'll, you know, I flip out, kill this dude, whatever. And then when it comes to a dude, it's like, yeah, go out and get it. And like, I, you know, I always found that like that interesting, the dynamic. Right. And so it, it, it is absolutely awful. So like I used to get that all the time. People were like, oh, if you have since I have three boys, they'd be like, oh, well, you know, are you going to are you going to be out there like tell them like to do this and that and. And then if you had a girl, how, like, how would you be on the opposite end? So for me, I honestly feel like I would try to be as fair as possible. Like, you know, like I'm not encouraging them to go out and do like, you know, I don't want them to get married to the first girls they see. I don't want them to get married young. Like I did and make, make mistakes and, you know, figure it out, figure your journey, like meet mm -hmm. somebody have, you know, experience life with someone and i think i would encourage the same thing for a girl and i think you would actually end up probably with a person with a better head on their shoulders like not sitting there and thinking weird like i'm gonna do this to piss my dad off not even you know mm -hmm. like subconsciously or consciously but like my dad didn't like he didn't have like the bro relationship with me like i had cousins who were my age and he was like bros with them so like if they got you know a date or something be like yeah and mm. then like he'd look at me and like realize that he couldn't do that in front of me and then he'd he'd switch back into dad mode and he'd be like um never kiss and tell don't be a jerk and then walk off. yeah and I'm like what? So like, that sounds never, like my dad we never related like it, I was really weird because like he had all these expectations of me but he never like related to me like I was all these other dads like with their sons that were like doing stuff and I was always like man you're like one day we'll get old enough to we'll go to, you know, go have a beer in a bar. No, man. So awkward. He was not that tight. <laughs> so yeah. The sex you know what? was bad. Yeah. I don't, I don't think, I don't know about other cultures, but I know Latino dads and sex talk. It's the worst. Oh my God. So mind you, I'm, I think I was like 17 and I was, I had already lost my virginity and mm -hmm. He oh my god ew room. no just kidding <laughs> <laughs> oh my god i'm kidding i'm and kidding was, nobody nobody really talks about like no, when I mean, they lost don't. it people really don't like and you know we'll, we'll actually get into that because there's like such a big stigma with it i think it's i think it's not i don't think it's healthy <laughs> i think like people should be talking about this kind of stuff because if you don't especially with your kids if you don't talk with your kids about it somebody else is going to do it and they're going to get exposed to something. All right, Mika, right. Let me tell you about when I was a hoe. All right. Sit yeah, down. Exactly. Take some notes. <laughs> Your mama had it. She yeah, had it yeah. going on. <laughs> so my dad walks in just, I don't know. I don't even know. Like there was nothing that like led up to it. Like I wasn't going to a party that night or like, you know, I can understand if it was like, Hey, you know, you're going to go out. Like it was out of nowhere. Right. Guy mm -hmm. walks into the room. I'm just there. I, I don't know if I was playing video games, watching TV. I was doing something. He just walks in, sits on the bed, and it's just like really awkward. And I'm like, all right, what are you doing here, Pop? And he's like, uh, and I'm like, oh, crap. Like, I, I, but, you know, mind you, that tone comes out of nowhere. So I don't know. He could be saying, ah, I'm going to get some uh, Chinese food. Do you want some? Like, I, <laughs> I don't know. So I'm like, all right, what the uh, hell? Your on? dog died. He's like, oh, like, what the fuck? So. I said, I just look over at him. He goes, uh, so the uh, birds and the bees. And I'm like, Pop, I, uh, yep, already been there, done that. He goes, oh, okay. Uh, always wear a raincoat and walks out the room. And that's it. Oh, wow. <laughs> I wish my, I wish my sex talk was like that. Short, sweet, to the point. Uh, if my mom ever hears this, she's going to die. I lost my virginity in the house when my parents were there. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, where else would you do it? I mean, shit, when you're a kid, you don't got your own house. <laughs> I mean, yeah, but I mean, there's outside somebody's car. Like, you can get creative. What the fuck? <laughs> I mean, who knows? Jesus. All right. Well, um, proceed. I, again, like I said, it's 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 healthier to talk about these things. I, I again, I was, I wasn't very knowledgeable. I was, uh. You know, kids that age, especially You're like, uh, where do I put this? It was this, like uh... Uh, all the time trying to figure out, you know, like, like it was one of those things that like boys pressure other boys to like, if you don't do this by a certain point, like, you know, and, and especially back in like the nineties, it was like, oh, you know, are you gay? Like, it's like uh-huh. <laughs> and it's like, dude, um, like I, I actually had this conversation with my son not too long ago because some kid, he plays online, right? With these kids and they're playing and and there's a girl in their group and one of the dudes says something about the girl he's like hey you know leave her alone like she's cool people whatever and he's like what she doesn't even have any tits and i'm like this kid's 11 like what do you mean she doesn't have any tits Mm -hmm. and so i'm like what the hell kind of saying is that so anyway my my son goes no like she's like really dope like she loves this game she loves that game and like he's really like describing a lot of cool aspects of this girl's personality Mm -hmm. and the other kid goes what are you gay and i'm like and he goes wait does that make me gay so he called he calls me he's like dad you know i'm like i'm like dude you were just talking about a girl like you were describing all these nice things about a girl like i mean even if you were even if you're unsure of that like you don't you know you're you're 11 you don't you don't need to figure that out right now and Mm -hmm. nobody needs to judge you for whatever like even if that were the case that didn't change how i feel about you like you're going to have, you know, maybe different challenges in life, but it doesn't change anything, you know? And I, I think parents are afraid of that. Like, like your kid's going to transform into that. Like, that's just, it's, it's who they are. Like they're, if that's, if that's who they are, that's what they're going to be. Like, there's mm-hmm. nothing you can do about it. And if you don't accept them, they're just going to, they're going to hate life and they're going to have a terrible relationship with you. And what does it matter? Like, I don't, I don't, I don't care what, like, as long as you're happy, mm-hmm. dude, it's none of my business. Yeah. And so uh he was like really relieved like I guess he just didn't expect that from me because I don't you know especially like Latin households like it's just not the norm right and he was just really worried that I was going to be like you know like what are you talking about or flip out and something Mm -hmm. and so I decided like that was a good moment to to have the talk and we you know we started I was just honest about it I was like hey you know somebody's going to tell you that you know like wait till you're in love and I mean yes maybe you should care about somebody but that's not always going to be how it happens but you should be mindful of you know exploring your feelings and just just being open and honest because you're not going to know what the hell you're doing and the other person is not going to know either but you're both going to pretend like you do and and that's what's going to happen like you're going to end up with two people who swear that they just want the other person to think that they know what they're doing and nobody knows what the hell they're doing if you just open up about it it relieves all that tension because yeah. I, I had somebody like she was she was uh, a friend of mine we had been friends for like, like since, since middle school, really, really close friends. And so I didn't expect that at all, but I guess she found out that I was a virgin and just showed up at my house. <laughs> and, oh, let me change that. <laughs> uh, I'm serious. Like just I mean, literally with that intent. And she showed up, like, I hate to say it because it, it sounds like, like, like so made up. It really does. But I, I couldn't make this up if I tried. She showed up in a Catholic schoolgirl outfit. And like my, I didn't really have, especially girls come over the house so my mom's like what the <laughs> so my dad my dad was like let it let it go yes my parents were there like I, I didn't I never really like had people over the house like my parents trusted me pretty pretty well so my mother was like what do you mean like he can go upstairs with a girl my dad was like ah he's fine they're not gonna do anything oh and my then, god oh hell no yeah I was like some little what? bitch showed up yeah, and like, be like I'm, I'm looking for your son I've been like, get the fuck out of here. God. It was it was insane. I was like so embarrassed. And then at the same time, I'm like, what the hell? Then I go upstairs and my my little sister's like knocking on the door every five minutes. Like if she hears this, she'll be traumatized because she'll be like, oh my God, I remember that day. Oh, she probably so knew. <laughs> I don't think she did. But she little sisters know what's up. They'll be like, yeah. you know, <laughs> well, it was, it was weird um, for me. Like I remember like my dad using a Barbie to show me like what oh, are the no. no-nos oh, yeah no. i know what like the no-nos like yeah like these are your privates 
don't let a guy see you without your clothes. And like, literally there is like the Barbie, or I think it was Skipper, like poor Skipper. She was showing us with Skipper. So like I said, I blocked it out. So I don't really remember too much about that. So when it came time for me to talk to my older two, mind you, I was a single parent at that time. So I had to talk about the birds and the bees to my son and daughter. And I think they were around um, fourth or fifth grade, but either way, the school actually, because I felt I felt like I should have waited until they were at least 12, like when they started going through puberty, whatever. I didn't know. I mean, shit, I don't think my dad told me until... I don't know. I think I was like 13, 14. So I thought, okay, maybe that's around the time I should talk to my kids. And so as we got closer, we were still in elementary school and my kids came to me and they're like, mom, you got to sign this parent uh, permission slip. And I'm like, what is this for a field trip? And they're like, no, they're going to talk to us about blah, blah, blah. I'm like, bro, I was like, you guys are in elementary school. What do you need to know about sex? Like, what the fuck? I think so I got I, sex ed in fifth grade. Was that the norm? I, I, I got it in seventh grade and girls were already like getting pregnant and having abortions and shit. I was like, yeah, that's probably why, because they had in seventh and, grade. And I, <laughs> and I was like still playing with Barbies, like, like no shit. I played with Barbies until like I was 14. Yeah. I, I, I played with like action figures. Like, but, I, 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 you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and I was a real big nerd. Like I used to take music. No. Oh, I know. Big surprise, right? What? So, <laughs> I used to actually take like movie soundtracks and play the music to the soundtracks when I was with my my action figures because I wanted like I was acting out movie scenes. Like I was like a director. You know what I mean? Like I didn't just play. Like uh-huh. I didn't smash them together. Like right, right, right. They, no, they it had, had, to, it had to be scripted. It, had, it was yeah, scripted, absolutely. right? Yeah. And there was music and it was the whole thing was choreographed and nobody was else was allowed to come in touch. Like I didn't let kids smack. Oh, no, 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 dude, this is over here. This is, you know, this is happening. Just go over there. Take that transformer. Get out. You know, here. you know why it was so hard. <laughs> it was so hard for me to let go of Barbies because you can ask my sisters this, like growing up playing with Barbies was very therapeutic for us. Like everything, all the traumas, all the things that we didn't understand that was going on as far as like mental health, like we didn't understand, we didn't know how to express it because we were like basically raised as kids to like be, what what is it? Be there, but not be heard, be seen, but not be heard or something. And that's literally how it was in my household. And so, you know, we were always like meant to like, be quiet, be quiet, be quiet. So we had no, yeah, we had no like way of expressing ourselves. So like when we went and we played Barbies, let me tell you, we would play Barbies from sun up to sun down because it was like so therapy and we like lost track of time and we put all of our emotions into these Barbies. And I remember, first of all, my Nana had to buy us male Barbies because my dad did not buy us male Barbies. We only had females. So my Nana would buy us male Barbies and we wouldn't, for whatever reason, we wouldn't tell our dads. We would just put them in our room, but we had male Barbies. There was a few of them, like about five. And my sister, one of my sisters, she um, decided to give him anger problems. And so he would like, spaz out and have anger problems and then his wife one of the barbies would give him his pills and he would calm down and no shit like there's times we would get so emotional playing barbies like we would be legit crying and we had to stop playing barbies cry and then go back to playing barbies and we had no idea like looking back we're like dude that's kind of fucked up but like at that moment like that was just so therapeutic for us like like we had abuse, we had alcoholism, we had drugs. Mm. Like it was just like, it was so sad because <laughs> we, one of the little, um, I don't know what they're called, but like the, the baby Barbies, like the little, the little girl, oh, yeah. Ke- I Kelly, I think it's Kelly, but <laughs> she would, she would get spanked because she was a badass little kid. And so she would get spanked and like locked up in the room. So it was just like, it was very sad. <laughs> 
my my dad, I don't know why I'm laughing. My dad had a thing with like I guess because he didn't have a like toys growing up, and he, he had like you know five brothers and a sister, and so he he always wanted like his own room and stuff like that. So like he basically lived out his life like th- vicariously through me. So like mm-hmm. I wasn't allowed to like decorate my room the way I wanted. It had to be like something that he wanted. So he'd be like, oh, I bought you this. And I'm like, I'm not into that. And he'd be like, what are you doing? Like he'd buy like a Star Trek poster. I'm like, I'm not into Star Trek, dude. That's your thing. What are you, what are you doing? Don't put that in my room. And then I'd, you know, I'd put up like an anime poster and he'd be like, no, it has to be framed. Like framed? What are you talking about? It's a poster. And and so it was just like, it was just really awkward. But yeah. he did the same thing with my sister's Barbies. Like he was, he wanted like to collect them. Like, like even if they were allowed to come out of the box, he wanted them to be taken care of a certain way. And I'll mm-hmm. never forget my sister's traumatized to this day because she took her, she had a Mulan Barbie and it was like, you know, the Disney collection, and mm-hmm. you know, Mulan in the movie cuts her hair. Right. So my sister cut Mulan's hair and my father flipped <gasps> out on her. Like, how dare you do that? And she was like, it's my toy. And still to this day, she brings that up. <laughs> my mm-hmm. sister, she's like 28 years. <laughs> you just, are you muted there you go <laughs> hey give it time give it time yeah. why well, is there a 40 minute limit that's stupid i guess because it's free so they were like oh you know you suck because you're poor <laughs> you don't deserve an hour no 40 minutes matter of fact 39 and a half minutes you jerk i uh, i was as I was so mad because I had something that I wanted to say, and it was about, I was about the motherfucking Barbies, and I can't. Remember. <laughs> oh, so it's like sad and funny at the same time. But my dad and my mom, or was it my nana? Somebody bought uh, my sister and I because we we're so close in age. We always got like the same gift, but somebody bought her and I. Um, there was like a like a Barbie bedroom set. Tell me why. Um, my, apparently we never opened it. It was still in the box, and I obviously forgot about it until one day we were at my um, my dad's house, and I want to say it was for my birthday, and my dad brings out this oh, this box, and I'm just like what is that? I was like, that looks familiar. Like, and I took pictures of it, but it was this old, like fresh from the box, like nothing put together. Like the stickers, you know, when they gave you all the stickers to stick to like the furniture and everything, like no shit, the entire bedroom set. And I was like, this looks so familiar. And my dad starts laughing. He's like, oh yeah, I remember this was yours, but I guess we were too little and, and, you know, had so many little pieces and he just didn't want to deal with it. And he gave it to me at 33 years old. I'm pretty sure I got that when I was like Sophia's age, which was like almost five. Wow. Wait, I think it said like 1997. So I was like eight. And I got it when I was 33. I was like, oh, yay, thanks. I can play with it now. (laughs) Now that I'm old enough to take care of it. So. (laughs) Wow. Yeah, it was it was very sad. I took tons of pictures, too, because I'm just like my inner child was like crying of happiness. So sad. Because I didn't I mean, as a kid, like you just want to play with that shit. You don't care about collectors and you just want to play with it and you don't give a shit about all that that reminds me of like a an snl skit i've seen it's like it's like star wars toys and the kids are like yeah we can open it up and it just shows like a really old dude he's like oh we could leave it in the box (laughs) oh that's so sad that's like my childhood that's why i think everybody loves toy story too because it's like letting you like play with the damn toys man like it is what it is they're they're yeah you know Toy Story, like Numero Uno, that really, yeah, man. I don't know. I just, I wow. literally thought my toys were alive. 
Like nobody could tell me otherwise. And so there were times where we would just like my sisters and I, we would leave the toys there. Like, okay, let's go. You know, mom said, let's go eat lunch, right? We're going to eat sopita. So we go in the hallway and we would just slowly peek in there just in case. Yeah, we peek in the room just in case the toys moved. We're like, eh. Mm. And I shut the door. I'm like, mm. I don't know. Some of, I feel like there was a doll that we could have sworn was possessed. That reminds me of a prank I wanted to pull on, on one of my ex law years ago. Um, she had a thing that toys? she didn't like. Huh? With toys? With a toy. I mean, we didn't get into toys, but no, <laughs> but it was a like teddy bear. Oh, wait. Like, We're done with the sex talk now. <laughs> I'm talking about teddy bears, okay? Teddy bear. Okay. <laughs> so we're going to get like a giant, like, teddy bear like mm-hmm. pull all the stuffing out climb in the thing and then have it like deliver it to what the house the hell? like walk up to it she'd be like what the hell they'd be like pop up and stand up and just freak her the hell out that's a lot of effort yeah yeah it would be really good what are you gonna what? do with all that stuffing that you take out i don't know we'll throw it in the trash <laughs> what that's a waste or, of a teddy bear or, i'd be so happy with a big teddy bear you could use that for a lot of different things stuffing for costumes or something like it's gonna be like oh i forgot you're a nerd you, you yeah probably see? cosplay there you, there you go i'm like what would you do with that shit make a mess yeah, i mean yeah pretty much I got kids they really throw it all over the place it's snowing oh, oh that reminds me when uh we first moved here and we had like a lot of st- um, styrofoam from the boxes Tell me why my, at the time, 11, 12-year-old son decided it was a good idea to literally shred it. And I'm talking about, you know, the big packet, not the little peanuts. Well, still, that would have been a mess too. But he just like ripped it apart. I don't know what, I don't know what goes on in this room. This is his room. I don't know what goes on in here. So it was all like smashed up. There was, they were, it was everywhere. And it clogged up our vacuums. Like it was just, we couldn't get rid of it for months. We couldn't get rid of it. And he was like, and then he even said, he's like, I totally regret this idea. I'm like, yeah, no shit, son. It took months. And so I was like, I don't understand why kids prefer to play with packaging instead of whatever's inside the packaging. It's funny because you say that and right in front of me is several cardboard boxes that were assembled into a tank it took oh yeah i've box, seen that and then put a little cardboard box and then like a two like that thing is so uh, I was like y'all are creative i was like i'll give you that's all that so cute creative. i did that too but we were poor so it was like a big i don't know why my dad got this box but it was like a big ass box and he cut it he made a door he made windows and then we had uh crayons and we colored like made little flowers and my dad, always, my dad did construction so like he always like appliances and stuff like that so he'd always have these giant boxes for different things so he we'd always take it cut it up and like make like like tunnels like a fort and have that and my mom would get pissed like we used to do all kinds of bad stuff. like that that's one thing like my dad nuts but like he's you know but he's like when it came to like play time, he was like like mrs doubtfire like you don't trust him with your children but like you'll mm. definitely play and have a good time like we water guns in the house my mother would be like why the paint the pictures in the house would be all messed up he'd be like oh we had a good time she'd be like I, yeah that's What's that's true <laughs> yeah my dad there was always some interesting you know what like he knew because i guess because he came from mexico so he knew like how to make good memories with a little bit of money yeah so we he took us to this um there was a, a community pool in the park and I remember he took us there, but we never went in the pool. I don't know if he, I didn't, honestly, I don't know if they had money to take us to the pool. Mm. So we ended up swimming in the canal, like right outside the pool, like right there. Out, yeah. It was very disgusting and dangerous, but I didn't think about that. As a kid, you don't think about that. No, no, you don't. Right. I just thought in my head, I was like that. This is the best day ever. You know what I mean? Like we, we played hooky. We flew kites. I think they were like from the Dollar Tree when the Dollar Tree was a Dollar Tree and we flew kites. Yeah. Now it's like $10 tree. Yeah. And we, I think we had like, um, little Caesars pizza 
but we had we ate it at the park so it was like a picnic oh, that's and cute. i don't know it was just to me i remember thinking this is the best day ever and my parents probably spent a total of like five bucks maybe six because of the kite <laughs> my dad yeah. like whenever i was like let's say my dad's late for everything so like if my dad was i feel like that's every latino yeah you know so like <laughs> because he's late for everything like if i if he was like had to take me to school or if I had like if whatever like somehow I was missed the bus or something if he was going to take me to school I wasn't going to get there like three four hours later he was gonna be like ah let's go get breakfast and he'd take me to like a diner where like they Ooh, cook. hell yeah yeah so like I, I didn't Dennis. care I was like great here's this me and my dad would do this thing so I remember like um the, like I tried being my dad was really responsible so like when I first became a dad I was like trying to be responsible and then here's my kid late to school one day and I had to take him to school and as I'm driving to school I get I'm getting there and I turned around and he's like what are you doing I'm like we're going to get breakfast kid and I took this dude right to like a donut shop and I was like we're doing this because like I'm, I'm making <laughs> it's this tradition today. yeah it's tradition it one of those things and like that just became a thing I was like don't tell anybody this between you and me and you know it's just something that like we bonded on it it's just I feel like you have to make those memories. You know what I mean? Like this sure structure to certain things, but those memories are important. Skip a day, you know, like. Fuck school, eat donuts. I I totally get it. Yeah. (laughs) Parenting donuts with dad. I know I do that. I do that with my daughter. Well, all my kids, but usually the older two, because they're the only ones that go to school right now. So I, you know, try to make them feel special. So if I take my son to a doctor's appointment, obviously we're going to go and eat lunch or breakfast or something. And I'll be like, don't tell your sister. And then for my daughter, same thing. I take her and when I get her a Starbucks and I'm like, don't tell your brother. And what's the first thing they do when they see each other? They're like, hey, hey, go mom got me. I'm just like, you motherfuckers. <laughs> I, I, I heard Eli teaching Ren some girl they had like a i bought him like a float it's like a giant crocodile so they could be in the pool and float around mm-hmm. and eli didn't blow it up right <laughs> so it's like not as full as it should be so like it's on, all like, deflated wobbly so these these little girls in the pool they were they were playing on it too and one of the girls gets up and it's like tilted and she fell in the water and then oh, i shit. hear Ren go ha ha and i'm like what <laughs> why did you do that? He goes, Eli told me to say it. And I look over at Eli and say, shh. I'm like, dude, are you teaching him to laugh? Like, Come on. <laughs> and, and you know what? I have to, this, this, it's random, but I got to say it. Like we took him to the pool day for it. I figured out that the heat and the sun makes them tired. So now I'm like, yes, let's go to the pool every day. So you guys go to sleep. And so, <laughs> so they, uh, they went to, I think I told him like day before yesterday, and there was these two girls that were like Eli's age. He's like 11, so like they were like 11 or 12. And they they brought like a water gun with them, and the girls got a hold of it. And they're over there like, I hear them, and they're spraying him. He's like, he's tanning, right? Like the kid's outside the pool, laying out and tanning, right? Like what, who is this guy? He's like 90 years old on the inside, right? And so- He's a grown man. Of course, like he, I, I was just like Benjamin Button, right? <laughs> and so they're they're spraying him, and then he's like, hey, 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 like you know, like 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 a, like an old man. Like, like seriously, like, and then, these damn kids. Yeah, and they're they're trying. I can hear them like they're trying to get his attention, and they're like, oh, no, oh. And I'm like, oh, okay. So like I'm 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 just watching this whole thing play out, and then at some point, I guess they they realize that if Ren's the, Eli's brother, maybe if, if he, you know calls for help, Eli will jump in the pool. So they spray him in the face. So Ren gets the water in his eyes and he goes, Jesus Christ. Oh <laughs> my God. Just like, oh my God. What is happening? Yeah, it's just the funniest thing because they just you realize like when kids get upset that the things that they say are things that you say and you're like, oh yeah, I gotta, <laughs> gotta be careful. So you have two grown yeah. men yeah. as children. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh my god man. that kid he's he's something else man he's something else yeah I, Sophia I, you're right Sophia right now has been repeating everything that she hears and she like she's also being more aware so like when I was looking at her 
and you know we laugh because like what she says is so cute so like she was she was helping me um make salsa and so after like you know we would cut the vegetables I'll put it like in her uh, measuring cup and I'll tell her okay scoop it into the bowl and so (laughs) it was like the cutest thing when she was trying to scoop it in the bowl and she goes there's like all the little tomatoes, all the diced tomatoes fell except for one, right? And she goes, oh no, he's scared. And she like, how, I'm like, oh my God. And we thought that was so cute. So we laughed and she's like, stop laughing at me. That's not funny. And I'm like, no, baby. I was like, you're cute. She goes, it's not cute. It's not funny. And I'm like, okay, like whatever, girl. And then, then when she, I think we were like swimming at my parents' house and I told my older two to come in to do something. She followed along and she was just skipping around. She was like, ha I don't give a fuck. And she was like, I was like, excuse me, what did you say? And she's like, nothing. I was like, did you just sing? I don't give a fuck. Like what? Like, you know what I mean? And I couldn't be upset with her because these are things that she hears. I mean, I don't go dancing around the house saying, I don't give a fuck. But... <laughs> I mean, obviously I say things like that. And so I was like, well, don't say that. Okay. That's a bad word. And she felt very like embarrassed, like almost like she wanted to cry. I was like, oh, it's yeah. hard. Cause I can't really be upset with her. That reminds me of something that happened like earlier today. Eli was, I don't know, like he just, sometimes he just, I guess is that at age, like just before puberty. So I was like, the hormones are a lot so like the energy is more than his body can contain That's the worst it's <sighs> weird sometimes right and I, I know that that was the same way but it's just like dude and so like if the others are screaming he'll try to like get louder I'm like what do you why you're the oldest why and so I yeah. got upset with him and I was like dude just just go to your room like just go to your room and then he didn't hear me and like I guess Ren was trying to like back me up he goes, Eli, go to your damn room. <laughs> I was like, no, no. And Eli was like, hey. And I'm like, I realized that he's like, that I say that. And I'm like, dude, I cannot. Eli, I apologize, dude. Like, you really, you test my patience. He's like, you test my patience. And you know what? That's a, that, that's a, that's a me challenge, not a you challenge. So you know what? Mm-hmm. I'm going to fix that. <laughs> like, go to your damn room. Like, oh my God. That's, uh, Yeah there because you know Ren's the same age as Sophia yeah. and so she does that too <laughs> so when I'm like yelling I'm like scolding the older two because I'm just like yada 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 y'all know better and then she's literally just like me like if my hands are on my hips she's next to me with her hands on her hips and she's like yeah brother yeah sissy and I'm just like shut up go go over there go be a kid What's interesting is like it, it chooses the battles. Like I think when it's in his favor, like he'll agree with that. But like if I were to just be like, you know, telling you like, hey, you didn't do this, he'll just walk over and defend him and be like, hey, don't tell him that. I'm, like, I'm telling him to do his work. No, 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 he doesn't need to do homework. And I'm like, yes, yes, he does. Like, he, he does. yeah, and, like, it's one of those things that that's like, cute. Like, yeah, like I know I can talk shit about it, but you can't talk shit about it. It's like, yeah, I get it. And, <laughs> exactly. And then, like, I get it. I get it. That's like you know how we are in the military, like. We talk shit about each other, but like if somebody else starts, like you can't, you can't say that shit. You didn't, you didn't sign up. Get the hell out of here. Yeah, uh, who is it? I think Sophia right now. That's how she is with Ronnie. So when Veronica, you know, Veronica, she's one, but she gets into mischief, right? And she knows she's doing wrong because she looks at me and smiles, and she does it. So I'm just like, stop! Don't do it. And Sophia's like, mom, she's just a baby, mom. She's just a baby. And I'm like, excuse me. Like, I'm telling her, no, she needs to stop. She goes, mom, look, you're making her sad. Mom, you need to be nice. You need to, you need to say sorry. I'm like, what the hell is going on here? I was like, no. I was like, her little ass needs to listen. So, so Ren is on the spectrum. So mm-hmm. it, it, it doesn't affect him too much in, in some ways. Like he's, uh, when it comes to like, you know, um, socializing, he's good. His sense of humor is, 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 he's funny, but he does have a tendency, like he doesn't, sensations, sounds, he doesn't like, which I think is why he wants his hair long, because I think like it covers his ears. So he's sensitive mm. to sounds. 
certain textures. So like something feels a certain way, he'll like, no, I don't want to eat that or whatever. But um, when it comes to like what's happening around him, he's very matter of fact. Like I, I say he's like Drax. Like he's just very literal, like hyper literal. Yeah. And so if I if I tell him something and it's, it, it's like, you know, a joke or something silly, he goes, that does not make sense. And I'm like, <laughs> it, it doesn't make sense. No, that doesn't make sense. And so like, that's his argument for things that he doesn't agree with. Mm-hmm. So like when it comes to sharing, he just, he's he's gotten to the point where he's he's basically jealous of Kai because Kai's got all of mommy's Aww. attention and he realizes that, you know, like he just, he started to get a little jealous. So I really try to give him much attention, but sometimes he's just like, no, mom. And I'm like, all right, whatever, dude. Mm-hmm. So he, he'll, if I tell him like, hey, you have to share your stuff. He goes, that does not make sense. I don't, I don't want to share. I'm like, I, I know, but if somebody doesn't share with you, that has that feel, he goes, no, oh, but they'll share with me. I'm like, well, what if they don't? He goes, they will. And I'm like, <laughs> no, you don't understand. <laughs> and he does the same thing for get, like if he's going to get hurt, I'm like, Ren, don't do that. You'll get hurt. He goes, no, I won't. I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> he's something else, dude. He really is. He's I know. So Sophia strong. does something similar. I'm like, get off of that. You're going to fall. No, I won't. Yeah, like, All right, then. I do do you do yeah, you boo. Pull down and then I'll, I'll have to help you up. Yeah, hard headed, hard headed. Yeah, I mean, I also feel like, I mean, I know some people don't believe it, but I believe it. I believe in pandemic babies. That's a thing. That's a thing. I'm sorry. Fight me. Fight me. Like that's a fucking thing. You probably don't know it yet, but when Kai gets older, you'll see it. You'll be like, oh shit. You know what I mean? I mean, I, I wouldn't doubt it. I mean, we just we are creatures of uh, you know nature and nurture. So, like, if you grew up in a hostile environment, you end up with a hostile personality. Yeah, so she's I don't doubt it. Ronnie is scary. Like, she's a beast. She will fight you, and yeah, she's high. just like very I smart. I don't understand how this kid like he he climbs things like he'll look at something and like put his toe in and then put his other toe in and like i i've, I've seen i've i've seen I've two before him they, they didn't figure things out that way like they would like mm, you know try to pull themselves up or like you know but this kid he i've, I've watched him and he's he's 10 months but i've watched him go and he grabs something and stack something else and then climb on top of that and i'm like stop. what the hell is stop he stop yeah dude because it's crazy okay. So when Ronnie was in the infant room, um, which is like, you know, all the babies before they reach one. Mm -hmm. So they either have to be one and walking um, for them to go on to the next level. Right. So I think she was about seven, eight months old, but they, she couldn't reach um, the sink, which is also like sink slash diaper change area. Okay. And there was something up there that she wanted. I think it was just to play with the water. She couldn't reach, right? She was on her tippy toes. She couldn't reach. So the lady that was uh, was watching her, she was there on the rocking chair feeding another baby, but she was observing. Veronica crawls to uh, one of the cribs, and underneath the crib is this it's not meant to be a stepping stool, but it's almost like um like a soft type of block. Hmm. And it's like it's pretty big, but she pulls it out from underneath the crib and slides it over to the sink and crawls up there to touch the sink. And she can now she can reach the sink, right? And at seven months old, you're like, what the fuck? Like, how does she know problem solving like that? It's I mean, not, it's not just the whole like, oh, she climbed on this. No, it's the, hmm, I can't reach it. What can I use around here to push over here and climb on it? Honestly, the best skill you can have. Like I've told, I've told Eli this a million times, like everything is problem solved. If you don't have money, that's a problem. Solve it. How do you solve that? You can get a job. You can do this. There's many ways to do it. But if you think about like only fans. Yeah, I mean, only, okay. absolutely. <laughs> no, do what you got to do. There, I mean, oh, man, 
Jesus Christ. I should have got it at the beginning when I didn't have a dad bod. <laughs> that's it now. That's what they say. That's what that's they the say. truth. You just start a dad bod only fan. Ask ask Jason Momoa. He's gonna eat Skittles. I, I know, like he's he's in fully embracing it. I'm like, all right, cool, man. Then I now this beard is starting to it's doing it. All right. I have no words. <laughs> Yeah, I'm really sorry. Feeling the beard. I distracted I'm myself feeling. just by saying his name. I'm really feeling the beard. Yeah, thanks, Jason. I appreciate you. Go out and do your thing, man. Be free, homie. Be free. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. I knew that as soon as Aquaman hit a billion dollars, I'm like, he's out. <laughs> it's crazy. But and you know what? We went through all this, and like this is this is, all this is good, but like we don't really have uh, like good background on like, you know, we've gone through like talking about the kids and stuff like that. This would probably be a good point for you to say like, you know, what is, you know, where did you come from? How did, where'd you grow up? And like, who are you? Oh God, I'm still trying to figure out who I am actually. Right, well, uh, you in the past? well, those people are gone, huh. but I, I was born and raised in Phoenix, Arizona. And then kind of around high school, like junior high, high school, I went to Mesa. And I mean, I'll be honest, I didn't know who I was for a long time. I kind of felt like I was too white for the Mexican girls. And I felt like I was too Mexican for the white girls. So I really didn't know where I belonged. And I, because I didn't know where I belonged, I didn't feel like that safe space to be myself. So I was, anybody who's ever known me, like back in the day, I was very quiet. I was very quiet. And it's not because I was shy. I mean, I had tons to say. I just didn't feel comfortable enough to say it. Like I probably felt judged or whatever. So I was a very quiet girl growing up. And I grew up with all sisters. There's four of us. And obviously, you know, my dad being a Mexican father, he was um, very strict over his girls, very protective, very strict. And I, because of like how I grew up, I naturally, I was attracted to someone very similar to my father and this actually did not end well so i was (laughs) spoiler alert uh but yeah i met him in high school and i hate using the term high school sweetheart because ain't nothing sweet about it let me tell you but that person um was a lot like my father and many others. I mean, clearly now the Vanessa now can look back and was, and could be like, those are red flags, girl. What are you doing? Like, clearly this person is not a good person. Um, But at the time I didn't know any better. And I went from the relationship I had with my dad to the relationship I had with this guy. And to me, it was all normal. Like this was all normal, right? And, you know, we had two kids, we were married, we, uh, he was in the army, and he felt like he needed me to make money as well. So I did, I, I tried looking for a job, but then he said that, um, that he needed me to join the army. I don't know how that was a solution, but I joined the army and I ended up leaving my one and two year old, uh, for the next two and a half years. And all while this is happening, he decides to have an affair with somebody, uh, also in the military. And that, that broke me in ways that I never want to experience again. (laughs) And I never thought I could, I never thought I could move forward from that, but little did he know 
that by pushing me to be in the army, I was able to kind of remember who Vanessa was. I wasn't just a mom. I wasn't just a daughter. I wasn't just somebody's wife. I, I had a favorite color. I had, you know, a personality. I had friends. I, so that just reminded me of what a bad bitch I was. And I eventually had the courage to leave him, but I partied a lot after the divorce in Hawaii. And that was like fun, crazy Vanessa, but that was also the same Vanessa that did not have time to cope with everything, like process everything that just happened, right? I couldn't, I didn't get to process it when I was in basic training. I didn't get to process it in Afghanistan. I didn't get to process it when I was in Hawaii because I was like using alcohol and partying as a distraction. And so when I went to Fort Huachuca, you know, being, that's when being a single mom hit me. And then that was another transformation that was, you know, uh, more scandalous, Vanessa, more self-destructive, Vanessa. Um, but one thing I guess that maintained through all those transformations were my kids. And they were the ones that motivated me to keep going. Um, fast forward, uh, I, moved, I got out of the military and then I moved to Tucson. And and now I have a new family, you know? Um, I have a boyfriend, I have two more kids. And so now this transformation, I feel like it's more of like getting back what was owed to me, what was taken from me. I feel like I am now starting to get that back. I am now seeing the results of what I worked so hard for. And I don't know, I feel like I'm still changing. I'm still transforming. I don't feel like I, this is not my final transformation. <laughs> um, so final form. <laughs> no, it's not, you know, cause I'm in, now I'm in school for my master's, you know, now I'm starting to, I didn't tell you this, but now I'm starting to see like, I'm looking into other jobs, um, still trying to stay with the government, but I don't, I want to use my bachelor's degree. Like I worked so hard for it. Like I need to use it somewhere. So, you know, I'm going through changes and I'm hoping that with this podcast, um, I don't know, I guess I can get my voice heard and, Perhaps maybe somebody out there who has gone through what I went through, or maybe they are currently going through what I went through, or maybe they feel like there's no other, no other hope that they have to stay in the relationship that they're in, that, you know, they're going to be a single parent forever, that whatever, whatever the case may be, I'm hoping that I can, I don't know, I guess I can inspire them to be like, oh shit, well, you know, I, there's still a chance. There's hope. There's, you know, a friend. <laughs> I, I think that people get caught up in what people are like, you know, like we were talking earlier with parents telling you like your life has to be in a trajectory. Like you have to do this, you have to do that. And if you make a mistake, like it's the end. And like, it, it sets up this precedent that like everything has to be a certain way. You graduate high school then you go to college you graduate college and it, it almost sets up these like these points where you're only you're only looking forward to like the end of a certain thing or like the, yeah. the culmination and then once it. you get it then what yeah and so like you don't realize that like it's not about the end like getting you'll get there but it's it's about that journey like mm -hmm. if somebody were to say to me like you know oh you know what i i don't think i I don't want to finish high school. I'm, I don't start a business. Somebody like, I, you know, culturally, you hear like, "Wow, well, you're stupid. You're going to throw your life away. And it's like, but why not encourage that person? Find out what they're talking about. You know what I mean? Like if it's something mm -hmm. crazy, say, hey, listen, you know, maybe you should rethink that. But, you know, or you can try it and it, 
maybe not work for you. But depending on how you have that conversation, that person might decide not to confide in you again, or just be like, you know what, I'm going to do this anyway. Whereas they might've listened to you, just said it a different way. So I, I realized that I, when I was growing up, so I, I grew up originally in the Bronx, New York, and my parents came, like they, they lived in New York and they lived like during the seventies, like parents hung out like, you know, whole studio 54 type deal. Like they were just ratchet. And so <laughs> then my great grandparents raised my mom and in turn, she took care of them when they got old. So I had my great grandparents living in my house and, and there were all kinds of like high expectations, but New York was rough. And so my parents decided to leave New York because it was really violent. I had my, one of my, my bus got held up by, by like a gunman, like walked on the bus and held it up. And there was a couple shootouts. We lived across from the police station. So we decided to move down to Florida and ended up finding our way down to uh, first stop at a place called Lakeland, which is where I live now. But back then it was like woods, there's nothing here. So that didn't last long. We were like, all right, screw this, what am I at? Which is just like New York. So was it really that much of a change? And um Miami was rough but I started feeling like my dad was pushing me to go to like law school like he was like you gotta you gotta be a lawyer you gotta do this mm -hmm. I didn't want that I wanted to be I, like I used to spend my time writing like writing stories just coming up with ideas and you know I would listen to movie soundtracks and then just start writing that that was my thing and I always thought like that's that's what I want to do I want to tell stories and um I bought books on, I had this plan that I was going to like after high school, move up to Canada and like go to this place called second city, which is where all the Saturday night live guys train and get noticed. And I was just going to like go there with, you know, like figure it out, meet some people, get an apartment, you know, wash some dishes or something, figure it out and then just get on TV. And then like nine 11 happened. And we're like, Oh, the world's screwed up. Like, what do, what do I do? Like, I didn't think that that plan was going to work. And so I just started following my dad wanted, which was, you know, go to law school. And then I wanted out. I, I was, I was in school. I was working a job and I was, I was just run ragged. I was like, I graduated high school. I don't have any time. I don't see, I, I'm not enjoying any of this. I'm working and going to school and I hate this. Mm -hmm. And so I went to a recruiter and I was like, I got to get the hell out of here. man. Like I can't stay here. And, um, they gave me like a little CD back then, like with all the jobs. And I like spent two days looking through it and came back and said, I want this job. And he's like, that's not how this works. Like we just, you know, normally we tell you what we need. I was like, no, 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 no. I, I went through that whole CD. Like, I know you guys give that to people and people don't normally care, but I was like, mm -hmm. no, I know what I want to do. And I want to be James Bond. <laughs> and so I was like, oh, I want to be, I want to do this job. And he was like, you're not going to do that. I was like, no, don't worry. I'll do that. I didn't do that. But, <laughs> and so you know, after I joined the army, like I, it forced me in a way to confront who I really was. Like mm -hmm. nobody believed based on my personality, I was, I was a clown that, that I would one, make it, that I would do that. Or that even that was something that would be considered doing, but it was something that I needed to do for me. And like you said earlier, like I was quiet, but like, I wasn't really quiet. I was only quiet because I wasn't comfortable. When I was comfortable, I was loud and I was goofy. But the minute that I was in an environment I didn't like, it was like tightened up and nobody would know me. And yeah. so all of a sudden I found myself in the army and I didn't have to be who I was. And I realized it didn't matter who I'd been up to that point. I could make somebody new or just be. And then I just did that. And I just stopped caring what people thought and just started being open about things and just changed my perspective. And it was like, I used to think like, like Paul is one person and like Cruz is a different person. And like, I have a lot more confidence when it comes to like, Cruz has more confidence. Paul's kind of goofy and he says nerdy things and, and it's just, it's, it's different. Yeah. And so, I know what you mean. Yeah. And I, I, I the army has its struggles. There are definitely a lot of a lot of things, but I feel like struggle is what creates a good, or I say, like a, a purpose in life. Like people are always looking for the purpose, and I think that that's the problem. We make it, 
you're never going to find it. If you look for it, you'll never find it. You have to make it, decide what you want to do. It's, it's, if you spend the time searching for something, you're, you're looking in the wrong place. Say, you know what? I want to do this and decide what your purpose is. Make a decision and say, you know what? This is who I am and own it and like make mistakes. Don't be afraid to make mistakes. Just roll with it. As long as we can make up for it and learn from them, that's what we do. And this thing's going to time out again. <laughs> oh, is it? That's okay, because I got to get going anyways. That's you good. do it's too. It's session. like... I know, but like, this is good. So we actually got this ahead. going good. And so I can like chop this up. And this was really, really good session. So now we know we got this working. Oh my God. We were like literally all over the place. Like we... Well, it was an introduction. It's like, I mean, that's good. Test, test run. The introduction came towards the end. I'll, I'll edit. Okay. <laughs> or we'll just leave it like that. It's organic. People will be like, whatever. What, who the hell are these people? <laughs> start talking out their ass. Let's Great. start with the end.